Welcome back. This is part three of the Book Nook build for Death Study. I'm going to begin with some extra bits which we didn't see last time. So I papered the walls and I added the sconces as well as some wood mouldings and a portrait of Susan. I've just added some details of how I created that look. I had the frame already. Uh, we decided it should be wonky and we used the carved channels in the wall to thread the wires through and attach the wall sconces there. I also made a wing back chair for the study and I am going to make a separate tutorial for this. There's some progress photos so you can see the process of how I made the chair and then I also aged it with a couple of washes of acrylics before sealing it. And uh, yeah, here we go. Here is the progress so far. The ceiling is pretty important in death study and uh, what I did was I planned out where the light should be on the ceiling and I traced the pattern uh, with some tracing paper and you'll see there's a lattice type pattern crisscross. I drew the skulls that I wanted and then using the soft polymer clay I sculpted skull and crossbones in each space between the latticing. Uh, just using some soft clay tools here pretty simple nothing too complex they will go into the oven for the recommended time Okay, so I used some string uh, light LEDs which uh, came as a pack and I cut them. I cut 25 from a pack of 50. Um, I am going to link a video which I found very useful for book nook lighting uh, as well to help anybody who doesn't understand circuits and lighting or electrics uh, how to do very simple wiring up for your lighting here. Now these particular lights, they do have a thin, it's almost plastic sheath over the individual wires, so over the positive and negative wires, and what I needed to do in order to wire them up was burn that off on the end that I was going to wire up to the battery pack. This is just so the wires were exposed, um, and the reason that they are covered the whole way across the uh, string of lights is so that they don't touch so that the circuit is not broken and uh, you'll see there's more information uh, in the video that I linked. So I placed the lights where I wanted them on my ceiling using my trace pattern, tested the lights and I am just using masking tape to hold them down but they look good to me. So now I'm going to make a rubbing pattern using a crayon and some tracing paper just to mark out exactly where the LED bulbs are and this is so I can trace them onto the sheet of card that I will use to cover up the ceiling. So 
I did try to actually use a hole punch to create a uniform sized hole throughout the ceiling but it didn't work so we ended up having to use the craft knife. can see I've transferred the pattern over from my tracing onto the card and here's the failed hole punch attempts as you can see it just looked bad so I just decided to go in with the craft knife instead Once I was happy with the fit of the ceiling card, I decided to wire up the string lights once again to my red and black wire. Red for positive, black for negative. Um, as I say, I'm not a pro at soldering, but I did try my best and I did make sure the connections were secure and as safe as I could make them. did have a bit of trouble with that black wire though. <laughs> uh, I wrapped up the connections with some electrical insulation tape as well to prevent the connections from touching and uh, causing a short circuit. After I did that I painted around each of the LED bulbs with a black acrylic. In hindsight I would have done this first and then laid the LEDs over the top, however hindsight is a wonderful thing. <laughs> but I didn't want any wood or any of the tape to show through the ceiling, especially when the lights were on. I wanted it to be a dark background around each light. I'm going to attach the ceiling with my favourite glue um, and then once the ceiling piece was secure I painted over it with a coat of Viridian Green Acrylic Paint. I created a lattice uh, pattern on the ceiling and to uh, emphasize this I cut thin strips of card and painted them gold. I also did cut out some discs but I later discarded those. They didn't look as good as I
So once the paint was dry, I cut the strips and glued them around the LED bulbs to create the diamond lattice effect on the ceiling. So now I am gluing in the skull and crossbones that I've made. They have been baked in the oven and they're nice and solid now. I'm using again the clear drying glue to secure them. And I also added the black card to the wall with the same wood molding that we created way back in part one and this is to match the other two walls in the book nook, the back wall and the other side wall. Just checking the lights. Okay, so we're going to secure the uh, furniture and we're also going to uh, assemble the book nook completely. I'm gluing in the bookcase. I have marked exactly on the wall where the bookcase needs to be before gluing. Uh, this includes marking where the floor comes up to the wall before we glue everything together. So I'm using my trusty wood glue again and I'm going to press down firmly and make sure that this does not move. I also glued in the wing back chair. Made sure it was in the correct position. And again, just using a very strong clear drying glue to secure it into the nook. And once I was happy that this was dry, I connected the two sides together and lined them up and using a strong wood glue uh, to connect them and also some masking tape to secure the join while it dried. Uh, now here are some scrolls that I made. I'm going to include these with my miniature book tutorial. And I also made a half circle table, a breakfast, and a best granddad mug. And now we're going to uh, insert those into the nook as well. You might also notice that there is a gold pull chain at the front of the book nook as well. I do enjoy the small details. So that's all glued in. And uh, while that's drying, we're going to make Death's scythe. Uh, I used a uh, round cylindrical lollipop stick and I painted it gold. I cut a slot in the top and I'm going to create the blade out of some card that I have lying around and cover it in aluminium tape. And again, I'm going to attach that blade into the lollipop stick with some glue and hold it securely until it, it's dry.
Okay, we're going to make the back piece of the book nook. Um, I'm using a thick card. I didn't want to use wood as I didn't want it to be too heavy. So I'm, I'm checking the fit to make sure it's snug and not too loose. I want it to be completely perfect. And then I'm cutting out a hole in the side to allow for the wires to come through the back. And then I'm also going to wrap this with the aluminium tape. So now that's all glued in. And we have our wires coming through the back. So of course, once again, I tested the wires and uh, the next step is going to be attaching the battery pack. So once again, some more amateur soldering. I have my battery pack. I removed the batteries before I did any soldering. I also used these connection sheaths, um, which I wanted to put over the join that I would use, so I didn't have wrapped tape. Um, I wanted it to be as neat as I could make it, and as strong as I could make it as well. So once again, I pre-soldered my wires, black and red, and then I attached them to my battery pack. And then I pulled up the connection sheaths and clamped them closed over the connections. And then once again, tested and made sure that all the lights work. Uh, what I didn't show was actually I secured the wiring to the back of the book nook so it wasn't free roaming and uh, it wouldn't be at risk of being pulled or tugged. So the final step was to cover the book nook and I chose this purple fabric. It's a faux leather. I chose this because I wanted to replicate the look of a leather bound book and also I wanted to keep the colour palette the same as what I have on the inside of the nook.
So thank you uh, everybody for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe. There will be many more miniature tutorials coming up. Thank you so much for watching.